two French princes Snap came old dirty bastards Spent half their life off their nut getting plastered Two decades later after they first met Now chat is shit on your TV set It's Scotty Marty, Scotty Marty Scotty Marty, Scotty Marty Scotty Marty I'm Motty, that's Scotty, and this is a special interview with the Boo Centre. Now, I'm a trustee at the Boo Centre based in Manchester, and we've got Kate and Paul from the Boo Centre, who are going to tell us a little bit about what you guys do, what the Boo Centre does, and also an event that's taking place on the second, uh, the 22nd sorry, of November. Paul, start with you. Just tell us a little bit about the Boo Centre, what, what, what you guys do. Yeah, I'm uh, Paul, and I'm the CEO at the Boo Centre. Uh, the Boo Centre's a homeless charity based in Manchester, as you said. Uh, been running 30 years, so next year, interestingly, is our 30th anniversary. Uh, we're going to be marking that 30 years, but with it being a homeless charity, we don't want to make too much of that. We'd rather we didn't exist. Uh, it's situated just by that strange ways area, uh, just at the back of uh, what was the MEN Arena. Uh, it's a day centre, and we see about 100 to 150 people a day come to the centre to access all kinds of services. Uh, we're primarily there to support people through their homeless journey. That could be entrenched rough sleeping at one end of the spectrum or neuter uh, sleeping on the streets, all the way to more of a prevention offer where we're working with people who are in tenancies and helping them to sustain the tenancies. Uh, we do a whole host of things at the centre, but primarily it's a community cafe and we uh, provide about 150 to 200 meet, uh, meals a day. Uh, we have a number of supporting agencies who come to the centre, and they may be agencies to support people with drug and alcohol, mental health, uh, physical health, uh, but also we do some softer stuff uh, through our activities programme, which gives people the opportunity to do painting, acting, singing, art, and other things so they can feel just a little bit more human. We did the football match as well, didn't we, last last year? Yeah, that was, was great fun, wasn't it? It was about eight all on it in the end. Yeah. That, <laughs> that was great. But yeah. remember seeing out the, the way everyone sort of took part. We did a, basically a charity football match at FC United's ground. And it was a team of people who, from the Boo Centre against yeah. the rest of the world team. And it was just great. I remember singing Championi on the coach on the way back. And it was like one of the, yeah. the best feelings ever. It was just so good. It was We've still got that video, haven't we? Yeah. That, that was a great example of what we like to do at the Boo Centre because it was very engaging. Uh, we had people who were visiting the centre for support who were making up the team and helping to support it. We had trustees, we had our community and our supporters, we had sponsors. So all in all, it, it ticked a lot of boxes for us as well as raising awareness. You know, we're really keen on raising awareness of what the Boo Centre does and homeless issues. Uh, but also we're, we're really keen on system change as well, and that's really amplifying the voice of people who are homeless or have been homeless to try and engender real system change. And that might be at a local level, a regional level, or at a national level. And Kate, how long have you been involved with the Booth Centre? Um, I think I've worked there about eight years in this sort of incarnation. Previously, not, not a previous life, but... <laughs> Previously, I worked at the old booth centre for three or four years. So, um, yeah, just to go back to the football match, I just wanted to add to that if I can. Yeah. But that was our inaugural match that you were part of. So this coming year for 2025, we want to have it as the real big celebration of us turning 30 for the football match to be the main sort of celebration of that for the year. I just did a bit of commentary. I was going to say, I was going to say, did you play? Eleven aside, not a chance. So I, I was, my services were needed elsewhere. But yeah. we've got places free for next year. So if you want to get your name down to play, we'll get you on. Yeah, I managed to get on. I was hooked off after about fifteen minutes. Slightly <laughs> embarrassing. I won't be on that long. <laughs> Slightly <laughs> embarrassing. There was a definite generation thing, wasn't there? All the sort of more mature players did about ten minutes, didn't they? And the others stayed on a bit longer. Yeah, there was a couple on the rest of the world team that we were ringers. Yeah, yeah. I had to have a chat with one of them at half time, yeah. saying, "Come on, bro, just chill yeah. out." Mate. <laughs> but still, we managed to get it to eight all. So yeah, you know. I mean, I think there was about fourteen minutes of added time, wasn't there? Yeah, <laughs> the ref understood yeah. the assignment. 
I think, uh, and it, it kind of aligns to the to the people who come to the Boo Centre. Really, we have you know a whole number of nationalities who access uh, the support. But I think I think the football team. I think we had eight or nine nationalities, so very Premier League it was. Paul, you so have you both been involved with the Boo Centre a long time. In terms of the scale of homelessness in, in Manchester, I mean, as a Mancunian like Jay's you walk up and down the streets and it does seem on the eye that it's, it's a lot worse. Yeah. Do you have any idea of numbers and stuff like that, how big the problem is now? Yeah, well, in terms of the street homeless, which is a very visible uh, thing, I think you, you're kind of talking about there, the, uh, the, the, the local authority with partners, they do a count every two months. So that's where they go out uh, late into the night and they, uh, they count people who are... Who are uh, bedded down and sleeping on the streets and then typically in Manchester those numbers have been anywhere from 50 to 70 on any one night but we all know uh, that uh, there are hidden homeless so there are a whole uh, a group of people who won't sleep on the streets because it can be quite dangerous so the best rule of thumb with those kinds of figures is, is to probably at least double that so possibly 150 to 200 who are in that very extreme position uh, of having to of having to sleep on the streets uh, on top of that and some of the people who access our services are, are people who are in and out of accommodation you know very fragile yeah. very fragilely uh, accommodated sofa surfing staying with friends uh, so you know, the scale is 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 significant and and certainly over the last few years very much compounded by a cost of living crisis uh, we have seen uh, people accessing our services go up by 35% in the last uh, two years. Jeez. At a time when uh, we're a charity, you know, we need uh, uh, funds to do what we need to do. Uh, so at the same time, we've had an increase in people accessing our services. There's been similarly an increase, a decrease in people's ability, organisation's ability to, uh, to, uh, to fund us. So really, the last two, three years particularly have been quite challenging. And Kate, one of the things about the, the homeless that the general public have is, I think, a, a stereotype as to why people are actually homeless or are living on the streets. Can you just uh, talk a little bit about that, the difference of people, why they're there? Yeah, sure, yeah. I think it's the sort of whole spectrum, really, of, of humanity, as it were, because we have people who come to us who have left care or people who've just never really sort of been able to succeed in their lives as in sort of setting up their own lives and living independently so we do a lot around the other end of the sort of spectrum that Paul was talking about uh, around prevention so keeping people in their homes as well so that they don't end up homeless um, we've got people who are had relationship breakdowns they were never homeless in their lives and then they find themselves in their late 40s early 50s and suddenly they're homeless cost of living has massively impacted people that thing that everybody's kind of uh, or a lot of people are like one or two pay slips away from being homeless we've seen that sort of bear out there's a huge movement of people we hear about immigration all the time and that's a lot of the work that we do and that's just increasing year on year um so then you'll have people who are coming out of asylum accommodation. So even if people get a positive decision, so their asylum application has been granted, that means that they no longer are entitled to that temporary accommodation. So they usually get a good uh, decision and then a 28 day notice. So that means they're destitute, really. They're, they're on the street. So it, it's sort of everybody you could think of. We see through the door at some time or another. And that's a problem, isn't it, with a, with a, such, such a spectrum of problems? There isn't just sort of one, you know, one fix for all. And that's yeah. the usual thing. Well, well, I'm not giving them money because they'll go and spend it on drugs and alcohol. And obviously mm. that's not the reason why people are, are, are all homeless. Yeah, yeah and, and we, we, have, we have to offer a real agile service to, to encompass that, really. So our staff are really skilled, you know, really good at what they do. Uh, and based on that, own in the, the person's own individual circumstances, you know, we can wrap around that and try and help where we can, whether it's providing services, whether it's signposting to a service, whether it's working with people who are delivering services on our site. So th th it is really, you know, we call it person-centred uh, in, in, in our kind of area of work. And that's really just listening to that individual's journey, what they need. And sometimes it can be something very simple and they just need a little bit of that and away they go and we don't see them again. Uh, sometimes it can be much more longitudinal over a longer period where we, we've had people who come to the century for the first three or four weeks won't speak to anybody they're so entrentched and mental health uh, issues sometimes drug and alcohol and over time 
lots and of trauma. trauma. Yeah. And over time, you know, they, they start to warm up to us and then we can really start to work with them and, and, and get them what they need. But And I think that's, that's why we uh, call ourselves a community. And I know that can have a kind of cheesy ring to it, but I really believe that. We really believe that because it isn't just people who are who've sort of dropped out of their lives and need a, a, a bit of a hand back up. There are those people, but it is about being quite a thriving community. All those different nationalities. Imagine what that brings, you know, into one space. Um, we, we've got a brilliant volunteering program that people take part in. And it's particularly important to people if they don't have those other things in their lives. If you imagine that you weren't working or, you know, you didn't, you didn't have the structure of your life and then suddenly you find yourself without that sort of identity, being able to get back on in, in some way, giving back, you know, adding value again and being part of the volunteer program that gives people quite a lot. So that's where we build our community, that we're all these different people together and we and we celebrate the successes of those people who are part of our community. Some come for a really short time. Some people are with us for years on and off. So I think it isn't just that sort of front end thing that people see of somebody in the doorway on Market yeah. Street or, you know. It must be very rewarding when you see those people as well, sort of turning it around and accessing the, the services and then, as you said, either helping out volunteering or just being able to, to move on. Yeah, absolutely. We've got somebody we were just talking about on the way here. There's somebody at the moment who's gone through recovery themselves and now they're going to start delivering their own recovery group from the centre. And that's really what it's about, isn't it? It's yeah. about people getting to the next thing and getting their lives back on track. And Paul mentioned earlier about systems change, and that's a really big focus, as you know, of what we do at the centre. So that's about getting the right people around the right tables across the city. So people who are accessing the service because they need that support at the time are still attending like strategic meetings in the city, part of the Manchester Homelessness Partnership, getting their voice heard around the right table for decisions to be made and to change the systems that they're sort of struggling to navigate through homelessness. I mean, we're proud of our activities programme where it's, it's a bit of a, uh, a USP for the Boo Centre where we have a, an activities programme on through the week, uh, through the week with all different kinds of uh, more uh, softer kind of activities where people can join in, uh, they can be creative. Uh, and I think that really uh, helps to unlock and develop a, a real relationship with, with some of the people who come to the centre. And we do invest quite a little bit of, of time and effort into that so people can feel human, they can feel like they're engaging in something that they enjoy. And it's not always about the current situation in terms of whether it's homelessness or uh, other challenges that they might have. Yeah, it's escapism as well, isn't it, from the, from the current situation? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's always amazed me how people can separate because I've never been in that position. I always imagine if I was homeless, the only thing I'd be able to think about is, can you just help me sort out this problem and get out of this position? But we do for years have had people come in and daily have people come in who are in really terrible crises, but they can still kind of separate it and then go upstairs and get be part of the art class or the drama workshop. We've had, we've had the uh, drama group perform at the Royal Exchange um and what's the place in in london the opera house the opera house yeah they they sang at the opera house and these are people who are still in process in parts of their lives that are really you know needing a lot of support yeah. and a lot of work but they're able to sort of be quite creative and give back and separate those things so it's amazing that the community cafe if you imagine it it's it's a it's a cafe and we have tables and people are, are talking and, and milling and doing the things and we've there's an old wooden piano against one of the walls and mm -hmm. The amount of times you'll be walking through and someone will actually be playing on the piano and sometimes it's someone who you've you've come across over the weeks and months and you, you didn't know that they could play the piano and they were there playing the piano there's a chap who comes who, who often we see him regularly often plays the piano and sings a song so he'll be there serenading and playing the piano and that kind of thing is, yeah. happens quite a lot <laughs> um tell us a little bit about the event on the, the 22nd wait 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 mm -hmm. tell it a little bit more so, which camera am I on? So many years ago, I shared a, a room in Greece for you, didn't I? And I swore that I would never ever Hang on. sleep is this out going? <laughs> with Jay again, right. but only for a bigger event. <laughs> so, that, I'm, I'm, I'm just showing the importance. You know, you can have separate sleeping bags. You know that. Don't no, you? we're going improper. Right. And you know, it's not going to be. You know, it's not going to be Greece weather. Yeah. Yeah, so, as I was saying, <laughs> tell us about the uh, the event on the twenty second. <laughs> So on the 22nd of November, two weeks away, I think, less than maybe now, 
around there. Yeah, um, on the 11th, yeah, 11 yeah. days away. Ooh, anyway, on the 22nd of November, um, kicking off at 7 p.m., people are coming to register, sleep out at the Cathedral 2024. So prior to... Uh, COVID, before everybody's lives got turned upside down, we used to go to the cathedral every year and do the sleep out to raise awareness for the for the Booth Centre and for homelessness and the issues that are going on, but also obviously to raise some money so we can keep delivering our service. And this year, this twenty uh, second is our first time back since COVID, so we're we're quite excited about it. A little bit nervous. We expect to have about a hundred participants. And we've got um, a couple of celebrities. Oh, thank you. Such as yourself. <laughs> oh, yeah, really, he didn't have to say that, but, you know. <laughs> Who are we to yeah. argue? And oh, you mean other celebrities? As, oh, sorry. As well as sorry, you. Sorry. As Property. well as you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and we've got um, Andy Burnham's going to sort of open proceedings for the night. And we've got Paul Dennett, the uh, mayor of Salford, yeah. doing the uh, sleep out with us. Um, who else have we got, Paul? Julie. We've got Julie Esmond Alch off the telly. Yeah. Everybody knows Julie. Fabulous Julie. She's doing it for us. She's getting in a sleeping bag and staying for the night with us. Um, I think we might have one more, but it's yet to be confirmed. Oh, so we're just well, going to special guest yeah, TBC. We're, we're waiting there. Yeah. So, so we sharing a sleeping bag, don't we? Yeah. We'll be warm, won't we? All right. Okay. I thought that was, it's not the first time. Um. So. People might be watching this and they think, fantastic, Manchester Cathedral, I physically can't get down there on the 22nd, but not I want a problem. to help out. Not so a problem. How can they? Yeah, just go on to any of our social media yeah. or your social there's media. A there's a link, sorry, in the description if you want to click on that. Yeah. If you can't take part on the night, not a problem. Many people can't, and it doesn't work for people who might have some kind of access accessibility needs, and, although the cathedral is fully accessible. Um, so, yeah, if you hit on the uh, donate button on the Booth Centre website or on the link that you're showing or the QR code, people can just generally donate to the Booth Centre. They don't have to do it and get sponsored. Although if people want to do it and get sponsored, there's still time. Yeah, so the, the way the model works is is people... Uh, people attend and they sleep out, and then they get sponsorship off people they know. So it's that that kind of uh, kind of the way it works and the way it generates the money. Uh, it's probably going to be a a, a good night. Uh, we're going to have definitely some... going to be a good night. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we're, we're going to have some yeah. uh, we're going to have some activities from say, seven eight through till ten or eleven before people get their heads down and uh, some interesting stuff going on. So it'll be going to have a drumming circle for those people who want to take part in a drumming circle. We're going to have a Some philosophy stand session, stand-up comedy. Stand-up comedy. Yeah, yeah. It's all happening. This would be quality, man. Yeah, it sounds like It's like Glastonbury. Yeah, this yeah. Is, yeah. that's it. A mini festival. We should bring guy with acoustic guitar. Shall we? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll put people off. Yeah. <laughs> Stop him playing, we'll pay you all the yeah, money. Yeah, like, don't. Please. So there's a lot going on there, isn't there? There's a lot Obviously, going on, and, and it's in the it's in the grounds of the cathedral, but people can sleep inside, and we're not no, going to. No, can't. Right. Not, you're not no way. I'm we, sorry. We should. Okay, I know you're trying to be diplomatic, and get, but no, that defeats the object, right? If you go Look, in there, it gets to three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. It's really cold, and it's That's raining. Yeah. You're, you're not going to come inside, right? <laughs> is that what the almost can do? Can they just go inside when they're yeah, out the night time? Do you know what I mean? Do it. Fair dues, but go hard or go home. Yeah, right. but to be oh, real, good on you, Jane. we are you. we aren't. It isn't the same experience as sleeping no, in the doorway in Market Street on yeah. your own, and you know everybody's coming by you half drunk in the night, and you you you're on your own there. That's not what it is. We patrol all night long. We've done it several times, and we've never had any trouble. Usually, what we get is a few people come in from the pub after they've had a few wanting to donate just sort of wanting to know what's going on okay. and, and and to help really um but the team and the volunteers sort of patrol all night long everybody's perfectly safe but if there is anybody who's a bit softer then or a bit sensitive to the elements yeah. they can come inside and, and and bed down inside but at about quarter to six in the morning everybody's getting rudely awoken and and, and politely thanked and and then they can go home because that is what happens when you sleep out yeah you don't get to wake up when you want to you don't get to wake up and have a coffee you get uh oh, come on get out the doorway and move on and there is a link to the cathedral because the booth center started in the cathedral so when the booth center first started uh, 30 years ago uh, it was in a one of the smaller rooms within the cathedral and 
it soon outgrew that provision so that's why it moved to where its current location is so there's a long-standing relationship with the cathedral can i just say as well i'm sure jay through this sentiment just as mancunian it's amazing what the two of you are and the rest of the community the booth center are doing for the homeless people of manchester so thanks Oh, yeah, that's really people, nice. Thank you so much. And thanks for your support in it all, because I think the more exposure and the, you know, the wider reach we get, the, the better it is, really, isn't it? Yeah. Nobody should be homeless in 2024 in Manchester. It's crackers, isn't it? He snores, though, so I'm just letting you know. <laughs> yeah, really yeah. badly. Honestly, I'm, I'll probably stay up on we'll that. We'll keep I'll, Yeah, I might put people off. Uh, thanks for coming into the studio and chatting to us about it. As Thank Scott you. said, keep up the great work. It's been... It's been honestly uh, a pleasure and a privilege to be involved with the Boob Center. I only stopped in for directions. Yeah. You know, I was I was filming nearby, my phone down on there, I stopped in there for directions and I bumped into someone. Like, ah. Yeah, Jay was like, oh, Jay, well, it's not seen for a little while. And then from that. Yeah, and you dropped in and then we got into a conversation and yeah. then you said, how can I help? And that's how it happened yes. actually, isn't and it? Is, yeah. You know, I've been very, you know, lucky to help out and it's been great. It's been a great experience. And, so for such a good cause so do get involved do click on the link if you can come down and get down to manchester cathedral then by all means do but if you can't there's other ways to help out like we said there's a link in the description there's a qr code there's all that sort of good stuff as well and you can have a look on the link and find out a little bit more information in case you're a little bit curious and we can cover everything there um once again thanks for coming in kate thanks no, paul thank you. thank you thanks scott i'm looking yeah. forward to doubling up in our little sleeping bag <laughs> together we'll be there and um, that's been scott abby Motter. this has been paul and kate from the booth center don't forget to hit like share and subscribe and check out the link in the description thanks for watching